CataractCoach.com, the secrets to a great capsule rexus. These important tips will make your life much easier. Now, we have a new series called the Secret Series on CataractCoach.com, and the purpose is for me to teach you all of the secrets that I've learned in the last few decades. And these are the secrets that your professors won't teach you, or maybe they don't even know, but I know them, and I'm going to teach it to you. We're going to democratize cataract surgery education. Now, here is a routine case. Everything looks normal here. So we flatten the anterior lens capsule with viscoelastic, and we're going to do our capsule rexus with just forceps. So going in with forceps, I first measure to get an idea of what I want to do, poking in here, and now look as I tear it, I'm really doing a good pivot. I'm pivoting in the incision in order to get a beautifully round rexus. Look how round that rexus is. And beautifully said, I'm taking my time here, getting a nice round rexus. Look at that. Pow. That looks great. Measured out exactly five millimeters. Now, the end of the case, this is that same case. I just fast forward to the very end. Look at the optic, beautifully overlapped by the capsule rexus. A six millimeter optic, a five millimeter rexus. Look at that. Exactly the way you want it. Now, let me tell you about these secrets. The secret to a great rexus are flatten the anterior lens capsule with scholastic. We talked about that already. Capsule wrinkling, which I'll show you on the next case, that indicates zonular weakness. Tripan blue dye is great, but it makes the capsule less elastic. I'll show you that. You got to pivot in the incision to make it perfectly round. Look how beautifully round this case is. And of course, I use these marked forceps to help me. Now, let me show you another case. Here's a case for a cataract case. Viscose is going inside, filling it up, flatten the anterior lens capsule, get a good pressure fill here. I want the IOP about 20 millimeters of mercury. Now, diamond keratome to make our main incision, and I'll go in with my forceps. Now, the forceps are not that sharp, and the reason I like them is it lets me know a lot of information about the lens capsule. Watch this. As I go in and I poke in, there's measuring it out, okay? It doesn't want to puncture. It just wrinkles. Look at that. I just can't puncture it like I normally do. So what does that mean? There's going to be some kind of global zyanopathy here. So I'll go in with a sharp cystotome. But look, it works fine with a cystotome. So if I just use a cystotome, I would not have any idea that I have global zyanopathy and kind of loose zyanos all around. Now, in this patient, I'm able to still get a beautiful 5 millimeter, 5.5 millimeter round centered capsular axis. But I just know now when I operate, be cautious here. This is not really strong zyanal support because if it was great zyanal support, what would you have? You'd have a nice, strong, tight or taut lens capsule and be easier to puncture with those forceps. So again, beautiful rexus looks great. Let's show you another case. Here's tripan blue dye. Here's a cataract that I'm doing. So there's the viscoelastic in. You see the blue dye stained the anterior lens capsule. Of course, you know I love my diamonds. Here comes the diamond keratome to make the incision here. Entering the AC, nice and easy. Look at that single plane diamond incision, beautifully done. But here's where you'll notice the tripan blue dye definitely makes the capsule less elastic. That's a two millimeter wide keratome, so I slightly enlarge the incision to 2.2 to 2.4 millimeters wide. Now, watch this. As I go on the capsule with this forceps, and I'll poke in the middle and start, okay, that's good, good zion support. But look, the capsule just kind of falls apart on me a little bit. It's more friable. It's less elastic. It's, you got to be a little more careful here. So I'll find I'll get a good grab there and get a good rexus going. Now, I knew this was not an intumescent white cataract, so I didn't have to worry about any lens milk. Again, measuring out the rexus there with the forceps so I know exactly what I'm going to get here. And now again, good pivot, pivot, pivot. Look at that pivot technique. That's the technique we use to make a beautifully round capsule rexus. Nicely centered in the visual axis. And beautifully round, that's going to look fantastic. Now, let's go back to the routine case one more time. Just to show you, here's the routine case. Again, viscoelastic going inside. You want to flatten the anterior lens capsule. I want the IOP at about 20 millimeters of mercury. Here comes the diamond keratome making our incision here. It's a 2 millimeter keratome, so I'll slightly enlarge it once I enter the eye. There it is. And now, I'll go with the forceps. Watch the technique here. As I go on the forceps, first things first, get an idea. These are marked up forceps. Two and a half and five millimeters are those two marks. So now I know, okay, about how big I want it. I'll start the rexus here. I notice I was able to poke in very easily, so there's good zonular support here. Nice, taut anterior lens capsule. And look at the pivot, pivot, pivot technique. Keep this thing nice and round and bring it finally to the end here. 
How beautiful Rex is the way we like it. Hey, check out our podcast, Counter Coach Podcast, number one podcast in ophthalmology for a reason. It will make you a more successful surgeon.